the, my topic for today is compulsory licensing and the pandemic. Now, there's been a whole lot of hue and cry over uh, whether the government of India should consider compulsory licensing in order to ensure that the vaccines and the drugs related to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic are easily available to all the people concerned. So as uh, law students and fresh law graduates, I'm sure most of you must be interested in knowing more about this. And my session will definitely try to take you through the provisions in the Patent Act regarding the licensing options available for the government and uh, the pros and cons of the same. So first of all, uh, what are the patents and applications for COVID vaccines or drugs? Now, are there any patents on the COVID vaccines? Well, uh, during my search, I could not locate any granted patent on the COVID-19 vaccine yet. There are around eight to nine vaccines which have been approved globally and been used. And there are many more in the, uh, in the pipeline. Uh, I think there are around 30, 40 more in the pipeline, which by, by the various uh, pharmaceutical companies across the world. However, the point to note here is that though the COVID-19 vaccines are not yet patented, many vaccines are still protected owing to the technology underlying the uh, administration of the vaccine. Uh, for example, Pfizer's uh, Bi BioNTech uh, vaccine which is not available in India as yet, uses the patented lipid nanoparticle technology to deliver the mRNA to the uh, cells. Similarly, which is patented, then there is uh, underlying technology behind Moderna's mRNA vaccine also is patent protected. And similarly, AstraZeneca's COVID-19 vaccine, which we are getting here uh, in the name of Covishield, that also is based on a no novel adrenoviral uh, system, uh, which also enjoys patent protection. Now, just to give you a brief idea about this, uh, what happens is that uh, when these, va these, these vaccines, they have to reach the body. Uh, it is not merely by injection, but they have to use a technology which ensures that this is available to the body and the body is able to make, in response to the vaccine being administered, the body is able to generate the antibodies required to fight the COVID-19 uh, molecule. So the most common uh, technology being used to administer these COVID uh, vaccines are the lipid nanoparticle mRNA technique. So what happens is that this mRNA are the messenger RNAs and these uh, lipid nanoparticles containing the vaccine is, uh, in, is inserted and this mRNA pass on this message, message to the uh, cells that they have to generate this, uh, the spike proteins, which will, uh, which will be activated and will generate the antibodies required. So all this uh, underlying technology of administration of this vaccine is patented, even though there is no uh, granted patent on the vaccine as yet. But there are a lot of applications uh, in the market for these vaccines. Uh, applications have been applied for, patents have been applied for, and is under the uh, process of being granted, not being granted as yet anywhere. Besides these vaccines, there are also a lot of drugs which are being commonly used in the COVID treatment. I'm sure all of you must have heard of remdesivir, toclizumab, favipiravir, ivermectin, dexamethasone, uh, baricitinib, uh, etc., which are all the drugs which are used to treat the side effects or the uh, respiratory tract infections caused by the COVID vaccines or drugs. Now I'll take you through the provisions available to the government. Before that, this is just a uh, small uh, chart which shows how uh, a particular vaccine is using uh, many different technologies. So it's not uh, merely a combination of drugs or a uh, vaccine which is uh, being used 
uh, which is to be administered, but it's a combination of the technology and the vaccine. So each uh, vaccine, like for example, the COVID shield vaccine will have underlying, uh, it will be based on say uh, eight to 10 patents uh, stroke applications. Similarly, all the other uh, vaccines being used throughout the uh, world or globally also has many different technologies which come together to ensure the most e efficacious uh, re result. So they are all interrelated. It's not that there's uh, one drug which is used or one vaccine which is used and you get the result. That is not so. It's all a combination of many different technologies and medicines, drugs or vaccines. So now to continue. The uh, Section 48 of the Patents Act. Now, Section 48 of the Patent Act provides the rights of the patentee under the Act. This section states that the uh, it, it gives the patentee the exclusive right to prevent third parties from the act of making, using, offering for sale, selling, or importing the patented product in India if the subject matter of the patent is a product. Similarly, if the subject matter of the patent is a process, the patentee has the exclusive right to prevent third parties from doing all these acts as stated uh, here. So the patent right granted to a, a patentee is not uh, merely uh, to uh, make the product, but it prevents any third party from doing anything related to that product for commercial gain. Now, to continue, just before the section 48 comes the section 47. Now, according to section 47, they, these are conditions based on which a patent is granted. So what section 47 states is that whenever any patent is granted or any article is made by a patentee a, 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 for a product or a process for which patent is granted, it may be imported or made by or on behalf of the government for its use or for its own uh, purpose. So the condition for grant of a patent is that government can always use it for its own use. So uh, particularly if you look at the uh, last paragraph, in case of a patent in respect of any medicine or drug, the medicine of the drug may or the drug may be imported by the government for the purpose merely of its own use or distribution in any dispensary, hospital or other medical institutions by the government or on behalf of the government. So these are the conditions based on which a patent is granted to a patentee in India. So it is not an outright uh, a grant, but a conditional grant that the government can always use it on its own or on, on its behalf. They can uh, get it uh, by the patentee, from the patentee for their own use. Now, the section 99 of the Patents Act gives the, uh, defines what is the meaning of use of the purposes of government. For the purposes of this chapter, invention is said to be used for the purposes of the government if it is made, used, exercised, or vended for the purposes of the central government, state government, or a government undertaking. So, the, so from section 99 to section 102, all these sections are how an invention is for the purposes of the government. Now, section 84 of the Act talks about compulsory licenses. So what is a compulsory license? At any time after the expiration of three years from the date of the grant of the patent, any person interested may make an application to the controller for grant of a compulsory license on a patent on the following grounds. So once a patent has been granted and three years are, have expired from the date of grant of the patent, any person interested can make an application to the controller of patents for grant of a compulsory license on a patent. On the three grounds uh, given below, the first ground is that the reasonable requir requirements of the public with respect to the patented invention have not been satisfied. It is not available to the public 
in, in the amount it is required, adequate requirement of the public has not been met. The second one is that the patented invention is not available to the public at a reasonably affordable price. So the second condition is that it should be affordable to the public at large. And last and the final condition is that the patented invention is not worked in the territory of India. Now, the reasonable requirement of the public has not been satisfied means is the uh, patented product available to the, uh, according to the demand, is that condition satisfied? The second one is, is it affordable to the public? And the third one is, is it being worked in the territory of India? That is, a patent is not granted merely to for the monopoly of the patentee, but also the patentee has to ensure that the patented product is available in required quantities at an affordable price and that it is being manufactured within the territory of India. So uh, I'm not sure if you are all aware of, there have been three uh, compulsory licensing uh, applications to the controller in India as till now. The first one was for a drug called Nexavar, which is a uh, cancer drug and which was held by uh, Bayer and uh, Natco, a generic pharma company applied for a uh, compulsory license for this uh, Nexavar patent uh, manufacturer, the Nexavar manufacturer to the controller and they they were able to prove that all these three points uh, were being uh, not being satisfied by the patentee. That is, the, uh, there were so many uh, people who had cancer in India and how many of them uh, could uh, receive this drug, like how many drugs were available. Then uh, affordability was one of the major criteria here because I think next hour, one uh, month's uh, dose was... Uh, Bayer was selling at a cost of around 2.75 to 3 lakhs, whereas Natco said that uh, they can manufacture it and sell it for uh, around 30,000 rupees per month. And uh, they also were able to successfully show that the uh, patent uh, was not being worked in the territory of India and that it was being imported in, into India by uh, Bayer. Now, this was examined in great detail and the controller found that what the uh, claims made by Natco were correct and he granted a compulsory license on for this uh, next hour. Uh, there was a lot of hue and cry, uh, US uh, and a lot of other countries uh, said that India is not being fair because uh, the big pharma or the innovator company requires a lot of puts in a lot of money in the innovation and the R&D and finally they come up with the uh, drug and giving a compulsory license is not the right way to go about it etc uh, etc et uh, but however a compulsory license was granted for this uh, and the remaining two uh, applications for compulsory license for two other drugs, they got rejected because they apparently they were not meeting this basic uh, threshold of this, uh, uh, fulfilling these three grounds. That is, it is not available to the public or it is not affordable or it is not being uh, worked in the territory of India. And so the other two uh, applications for compulsory license got uh, rejected. Now, uh, just because these three grounds are uh, not uh, are being met does not mean that you get a compulsory license because there has to be a due uh, action on the part of the applicant for compulsory license to show that they had applied to the patentee for a voluntary license and the patentee is not willing to give them a voluntary license and that is why they are being forced to apply for a compulsory license. Uh, and that uh, they also have to show that they have the ability and the manufacturing capability uh, to uh, produce the required quantity to meet the requirement of the public uh, and uh, that they will do it at a price which is really affordable to the public in general. So all these conditions, only when they are met, does the controller uh, think about uh, granting a compulsory license. So as I said, 
the old there has only been one compulsory license granted in india as yet there has been no other even though there had been two uh, more applications made for compulsory licensing but uh, none of them have got granted uh, other than this bayer's nexa uh, patent so uh, it's not an easy or a straightforward thing that you apply for a compulsory license and you get it you have to go through the whole process and the point to note here is that uh, the compulsory license is only for a granted patent it is not applicable for any application for a patent so to continue uh, there's a section 92 Uh, of the act which provides for compulsory license on notification by the central government thus if the central government is satisfied in respect of any patent in force in circumstances of natural uh, national emergency or circumstances of extreme urgency or in case of public non commercial use that it is necessary that compulsory licenses should be granted at any time after sealing of the patent it may make a declaration to that effect by notification in the official gazette so here this is another option available this is an option which is uh, to be invoked by the central government for any patent in force so this section again is only for patents which are in force this does not include any applications for patent which are there or for any technology which has not been patented as yet but is still under the process of being patented so here if the government is satisfied that there's a situation of na national emergency or extreme urgency then it can uh, put a notification in the official gazette that they are willing to uh, issue compulsory licenses if any applicant is uh, wants to consider that and a generic company can once the notification has come in the official gazette they can go ahead and apply for uh, the compulsory licensing and then get it uh, done here they have also uh, clarified uh, in the last paragraph like uh, uh, what is a national emergency or extreme urgency includes public health crisis so uh, thought they have uh, epidemics they have covered epidemics and hiv and uh, malaria tuberculosis etc so uh, uh, recently there was a, a news article in the uh, papers regarding natco pharma applying uh, for compulsory licensing under this section 92 uh, but however Uh, i i'm not sure what has happened to that application but they had not gone about it in the right way because there was no notification by the central government that uh, this they were ready to issue the compulsory license they merely applied directly for the compulsory license stating that uh, this is a, a situation of extreme urgency or national emergency and uh, that they should be granted a compulsory licensing uh, they have invoked this section 32 uh, however uh, not sure what has happened to that application now uh, these are two sections of the act section 100 and section 102 of the act which provides the power to central government uh, to invoke uh, to grant licenses uh, for the purposes of the government so here the main point is that this section 100 and section 102 covers applications for patent as well as granted patent which can be used for the purposes of the government so here uh, these two sections allows that any application for a patent has been made can also be uh, invoked by the uh, central government as well as a granted patent can be taken over by the government like uh, uh, for the purposes of the government so acquisition of inventions by the central government is section 102 so uh, if you uh, people re remember recently uh, the supreme court had also uh, directed the government to consider uh, licenses compulsory licenses and these are the sections which are suggested by the supreme court to con to be considered that is section 100 and section 102 because uh, here the government has all the right the central government can uh, if necessary acquire an invention for public use so this section can easily be invoked by the central government and they can uh, 
direct the patentee or the uh, uh, patent applicant to uh, give a compulsory license or to the uh, interested parties to ensure that the needs of the public are met. Now, what is the uh, now what was what was discussed was the relevant provisions in the act how uh, about compulsory licensing or licensing by the government etc now to continue with that what are the uh, the pros of compulsory licensing would definitely be that uh, it can be manufactured by the generic companies so that uh, vaccines and other uh, drugs which are uh, not available as of now uh, which we are facing a shortage of can be obtained easily and uh, it, it will be uh, not, uh, there will no longer be any shortage. But there are a lot of other uh, criteria into, involved in this compulsory licensing. The problem here would be that uh, a patent or a patent application, though it is di disclosing the best method of carrying out the invention, it may not necessarily include all the information required. So there will be some information which will be uh, an undisclosed information to carry out the uh, invention stated in the patent uh, application or the patent. Uh, there will be trade secrets. There will be know-how involved. Like, uh, so uh, what can be the um, undisclosed information is, say, uh, when you're making a vaccine, uh, how? What are the thermodynamics involved? At what temperature are you doing, or how much uh, solvent ratio? How much the additives which you are adding, which will ensure that it is uh, most efficaciously delivered to the uh, patient. That may ne not necessarily be uh, disclosed in the uh, patent application or the patent granted patent. Similarly, trade secrets. So some important, but. Uh, may, maybe a very minor point, but some very important point may not have been included, which will ensure that the uh, invention works at its best possible uh, way. That is, uh, the disclosure in the uh, patent application or the patent will definitely work, but will it work in the best possible way? Uh, so uh, that is undisclosed information. Trade secrets are like, some information which has been held back by the patentee or the applicant, which is required again to ensure that the invention is worked into the best possible way. And know-how uh, <clears throat> know definitely is something which is uh, like when you're filing for a patent application uh, and the patent is granted, it will all be based on maybe a, a invention which has been worked at the lab scale. So when you're doing it at a large scale or uh, at a, a plant scale, uh, you need to have the know-how on how to make it more effective, how that will be uh, uh, most efficaciously produced in a large scale uh, and uh, not in a lab scale. So all this will be the knowledge how to transfer a lab scale experiment into a uh, plant scale or a manufacturing a commercial scale would be the know-how of the persons involved. So all these things need not necessarily be uh, reflected in a patent application or a granted patent. So the problem is when a compulsory license is being granted, would the patentee or the applicant willingly disclose all this information? Or what are the ways to get this information for the government? So this is one of the very uh, big questions uh, of whether compulsory licensing can uh, address these issues. For, uh, for example, for undisclosed information, uh, maybe the clinical trial data or the data supplied to the regulatory uh, uh, bodies can be taken, especially for uh, in case of drugs and uh, or vaccines and all, uh, can be taken and some uh, information can be obtained. However, these are supposed to be uh, private data and data which are not to be disclosed. So would the government have to uh, again uh, ask the D DGCI, the uh, drug controller, to uh, disclose these data also? Then uh, this know-how, as I said, 
while the patent specification will contain all the technical details to manufacture the patented invention, there is always an element of know-how required to develop mastery over the technology. So even if a compulsory license is being granted, would it ensure that the product which comes out will be the product which is what is required, which has all the uh, advantages and the qualities of the uh, innovator's product. This lack of know-how can definitely have very serious implications, especially in uh, drugs and vaccines. So how do you get the uh, innovator companies or the patentees to disclose this? Uh, merely issuing a compulsory licensing uh, on the patentee or the innovators are not, they are not going to uh, disclose these things. So uh, this is a big drawback of compulsory licensing according to uh, our understanding. So uh, because uh, even though the compulsory licensing, uh, all they will have is the uh, patent application with them or the granted patent with them. And they have to do uh, multiple uh, research, R&D, repeated trials and experiments to come up with the final efficacious product, which will be a Herculean task. And uh, also another thing is uh, issuing compulsory licensing. Uh, will it work in the way that uh, unless a compulsory licensing is issued and uh, they ensure that the uh, affordability is kept, uh, is retained for the vaccines and the drugs, even by the generic manufacturers, then uh, post that if the generic manufacturer is having to put in a lot of effort to uh, do uh, repeated trials and experiments, will it be worthwhile for them? Will they be willing to put in that kind of an effort and uh, money into that? So all these questions have to be answered before a compulsory licensing can be issued. Anyways, the government does not seem very keen to go in for compulsory licensing and uh, they are more uh, keen to go in for voluntary licensing uh, is what has been noticed as of now because as you all know, uh, the baricitinib, the drug for which NATCO had filed for a compulsory licensing application under section 92, uh, the Eli Lilly, which is the uh, patentee for that uh, particular drug has given out voluntary licenses to a lot of uh, generic companies and that too, they have given royalty free voluntary licenses. So uh, maybe that is the way to go forward that the innovator companies show a lot more uh, empathy in this situation and decide to share their knowledge. And instead of forcing their uh, hand by issuing compulsory licensing, uh, we should think of a more uh, amicable way to come up as a, with a solution. So uh, in the FAD, as I said, the government does not seem very keen on getting compulsory licensing uh, issued and uh, they are seeming to be more interested in going about things in a more uh, friendly manner or an amicable manner. So another concern which the government of India has raised at the SC in response to their uh, direction that the government should consider compulsory licensing option is that uh, the availability of raw materials and essential inputs. So uh, even if a compulsory license is uh, forced by the government, uh, government issues a compulsory license, do we have the uh, capability to uh, produce, manufacture the required drugs? So uh, like, I said uh, the what the point the government has raised at the SE is the constraint in availability of raw materials and essential inputs. A lot of uh, countries, like for example the US, uh, etc., have uh, put a ban on export export of the raw material and other active ingredients till uh, the end of pandemic. So unless and until we have. Uh, do we have the uh, manufacturing capability for these raw materials? I don't think we have to the extent required. We definitely rely on these a lot of uh, other countries for the raw materials. And most of the countries have for now put a uh, ban on the export of these raw materials. 
considering that uh, each and every country requires uh, these vaccines and these drugs and hence they are ensuring that their uh, population gets enough uh, drugs and medicines before they are sending it out. So uh, in absence of these raw materials and other uh, ad uh, additives or excipients which are required to manufacture these drugs and uh, vaccines, a compulsory licensing uh, would be of no use at all. So uh, that is it. And another thing to uh, remember is that vaccines, unlike this, uh, the other small molecules like a remdesivir or a baricitinib, vaccines are all biological molecules. So these biological molecules are not as easily reverse engineered as a small compound drug. So uh, when it's a small chemical molecule, uh, the R&D can uh, merely do a reverse engineering and come up with uh, what are all the constituents of that. And easily, it is much easy for them to uh, uh, make that uh, small molecule drug avail uh, manufacture that in their facilities. However, when it comes to vaccines, as I said, these are all biological molecules. And with a biological molecule, you have to be really careful that the biosimilar or the equivalent of that molecule when being produced, even a slight variation in the uh, manufacturing conditions may result in a completely different product than what is required. So there has to be, unless you know the exact details, it would be very difficult for the uh, generic companies to produce this vaccine. Therefore, uh, the compulsory licensing does not seem to be the uh, most best method to go for word with in this situation uh, as of now. So uh, let's see how and uh, what the government is planning to do. As you all may be aware, the government of India, along with the government of uh, South Africa, have uh, applied to the uh, WTO, that is the World Trade Organization, for a patent waiver, uh, which is still under consideration. So nothing much is being said about that. Uh, but even that, we don't know how it is going to uh, pan out or work out. So uh, it's just wait and watch how it is going forth. That is all. Thank you. Uh, after a company gets a, a company license, do they need to uh, get the approvals for the same medicine which has already uh, been made or uh, they can directly market it? Uh, no, no, no. So even if a company gets the approval uh, for a compulsory license, they will definitely have to get the approval from the uh, drug controller. Uh, so, uh, like, uh, there are four stages for uh, normal regulatory approval. However, uh, in case of uh, this generic manufacturing, I think they don't have to go through all the four stages. They just have to go to one or two. Uh, so, is there any fast tracking mechanism for that? For uh... Yeah, so because they don't have to go through all the uh, steps as, uh, as the innovator has to, uh, it will definitely be on a faster, uh, uh, fast, fast track mode. And uh, definitely, I think in, in a situation like what we are in, uh, the government will definitely consider that and uh, take uh, appropriate action to uh, fast track this uh, approval uh, methodology. Okay, madam. Uh, one more doubt. Uh, hmm. What about the, if they are making the same medicine, uh, do they need to apply for a separate trademark for the same device they are marketing or they can follow the same? No, no, they cannot. They cannot follow the same uh, trademark because uh, that trademark is for that particular patentee or the uh, applicant for patent. So uh, they will also prefer that they have their own uh, brand on that, the generic company. Definitely, they'll prefer that because how will you distinguish between the uh, innovators product and the uh, generic uh, uh, product. They can never apply for the same trademark. They will definitely have a separate uh, trademark. Okay. okay. Thank you. As well as what we have up till now discussed, as we see our Indian laws are not giving any incentives for any domestic company to actually come up with a patent. Because as we see if the patent somehow becomes very essential for a government, government can give a compulsory license in three years time. 
right so now the question comes if a company who wants to yeah, yeah, it's a hypothetical question hmm. it's a indian company which actually files a patent for innovation ha huh. then how to protect that innovation from basically being never ever being able to given out to anybody for a compulsory licensing can it be done under our current frame uh, structure that's yeah, what i'm asking yeah. Yes, definitely. Because as I said, compulsory licensing has these three grounds which has to be satisfied. So uh, uh, only then can a government grant a compulsory license. The first one is uh, like availability. So uh, when you are getting a monopoly for a patent uh, for patent for twenty years, invention patented invention for twenty years, you have to ensure that it is easily available to the public. that is uh, when uh, when the government gives you monopoly over that particular uh, say for example it's a drug so when the government grants you a patent it ensures that in in exchange for the monopoly you are making that drug available uh, to the public and uh, second one is of course affordability that uh, you are not uh, selling it at very high cost so that it is not affordable to the public then uh, your patent will be uh, rendered useless because even though you are making it available if nobody can afford it then there's no use of that and the third ground is of course uh, the making within the territory of india which though it is there that has not been very strictly followed because even in bayer's nexavar case uh, it was seen that bayer was importing the drug Uh, but the court said that uh, as long as it is being available that is fine it is not our concern whether it is um, being imported or uh, this thing that particular case they uh, decided that so uh, it's not the, uh, also as i said the compulsory licensing is not a very uh, uh, repeatedly issued license in the whole history there's only been one compulsory license as yet so government is not uh, like giving out compulsory licenses uh, regularly or uh, uh, continuously oh, okay so ma'am now the next question comes in this part is as we see if you see the pharma market in india majorly is dominated by generic pharmaceuticals so basically are they basically then uh, all voluntary licenses or what because as we see earlier in 80s we see a lot of reverse engineering being done by pharmaceutical companies in india so was this all voluntary or some part of it was okay kind so of a uh, in a gray area you know okay no no so see uh, comp- uh, india i don't think we have a innovator company we don't have all of them are generic companies so uh, when you're saying 80s uh, we were producing the generic companies but till before 2005 uh, there was no product patent regime in india the product patent regime started only uh, from uh, the mailbox applications that is 95 and it came into effect only in uh, 2005 so uh, all these generic companies which are introducing the products into the market either the patent has lapsed or they are on voluntary licenses and they are not on, uh, on any other licenses that is either the patent either the patent product patent has expired and they are manufacturing they are manufacturing understood or do you have any further queries on that ma'am no, no, that's it that's it uh, yeah. that's just what was solved my query ma'am thank you for the explanation okay. ma'am ma'am uh, if one a one person applying for the compulsory license then he has to apply uh, has to take a voluntary application from the patent Patent. So no, what no, content no. should be there in that? No, 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 no. It is not like that. For for a compulsory licensing, what you have to do is uh, first and foremost you should apply to the patentee for a uh, for a uh, voluntary license, and you have to show the uh, to the controller of patents that you have done your due diligent work in uh, trying to get a voluntary license from the patentee, and he is not willing to give you. so you have to show that uh, you apply to him saying that i require a voluntary license in this and uh, i am willing to pay this much royalty and whatever grounds are there etc then uh, once uh, if the patentee is not responding to your queries or he is answering but he is not willing to give you then you have to wait for 6 months only after 6 months uh, you have to repeatedly try uh, getting a license during this 6 months and post that you will have to uh, 
only then can you go, go to the controller of patents saying that he is not i have tried this voluntary license option but he is not willing and you also have to prove that the drug is not available to the public uh, at large in the required quantities that there is demand this disease uh, is uh, very prevalent in india and uh, there is a demand for this particular drug however it is not being manufactured to the extent um, uh, to meet the demand then that it is uh, this uh, patent is selling it at this rate which is way too expensive and not affordable for the public in general and that it is not being manufactured in the territory of india so all these grounds you have to prove and then you have to submit this application to the drug controller ma'am uh, you have cleared all, all my queries in one question only okay. thank you so much thank you all